welcome to You Central News. I'm Lily Myers. And I'm Tyler Whitehead. And the big news of the day is the change in the weather we can expect to see tonight. Fall weather is finally on its way in Oklahoma this evening. Yes, that's right. If you are dressed for summer today, you should prepare to wear a jacket tomorrow. We will experience a significant cold front throughout the state starting tonight. That's right, Tyler and Lillian. It is currently 99 degrees here in Edmond, Oklahoma. However, I think you're going to be happy with, as it cools off later on tonight. Uh, winds out of the south at about 22 miles per hour. <laughs> Humidity is hovering at around 9, 29%, excuse me. And then it currently feels like 100 degrees. Weather headlines for today through the rest of the week. You got hot and windy today. Got a 40% chance of overnight storms tonight into early morning tomorrow, but we get our first taste of fall weather tomorrow. Back to you guys at the desk. Right now on campus, UCO says it has 87 active cases and just over 1,000 recoveries. The university is seeing over 1,100 cases since August last year. And as for Oklahoma COVID numbers, the State Department of Health is reporting over 1,700 new cases across the state today. This brings the total number of active cases to over 18,000. Over 1,200 Oklahomans are hospitalized with the virus. 347 are in the ICU. And we have a breaking update from Newport, Virginia today. Authorities have found a school shooting suspect that wounded two and left two others injured. Two people were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say that an altercation broke out leading up to the evacuation. It is still unsure whether the shooter was a student. U Central chatted with students on their way to class about masking protocols on campus. Here's what they had to say. I think masks in the classroom are an effective tool, especially in crammed classrooms that have 30 or 40 people in them where they're all right up next to each other. I think they're a good use at preventing any sort of... It just kind of comes down to, in today's world, we don't really know who has a vaccine and who doesn't. And I feel like you should be able to have your own opinion on whether you want to get it or not, even though a lot of people think that you shouldn't have that opinion. I guess for me personally, it just comes down to I want to be in class and learn in the classroom and not have to do it through Zoom. So that's why I think it's a good idea to wear a mask in the classroom. All right. Uh, I think there's pros and cons to having masks, you know, with the pros obviously being that not everyone gets sick. Uh, the cons is, you know, it's kind of hard for professors to kind of pick up and remember faces as well, you know, because not too long ago my professor saw me with my mask off for the very first time due to me eating. So, like, I think, you know, it's either or. But, uh, man, I think it's kind of a good opportunity for us as college students to kind of display our responsibilities. So I think it's a good opportunity for people to make their decisions if they want to wear a mask or not. Um, I don't wear my mask outside, but I do wear my mask in the classroom if I feel uncomfortable, if I'm too close to people. But I think kind of giving the opportunity for students to make their own decision is good because we are adults at college and it kind of gives you some responsibility being here by yourself and kind of going away from home. I think the mask mandate now is uh, pretty decent for the most part. Um, it's kind of hard to enforce a mask mandate on people who really don't want to wear one. But uh, I personally wear one mostly because, I mean, I'm vaccinated, so I, I'm not worried about me getting sick, but it's more so about like spreading it to other people who aren't. And These students also told U Central News that choice and independence to do research and make their own decisions is important to them. Pfizer announced this morning that its COVID-19 vaccine works for children ages 5 to 11. They will begin to use authorization for this age group soon, making a large step towards vaccinations for children. The vaccine is available now for anyone 12 and older. This news comes as kids return to school in the midst of the Delta variant. We will continue to update you as we learn more. And now an update on a developing story from social media. The disappearance of Gabby Petito has had the internet buzzing over the past few days. Now we go to Tyler with an update on this ongoing story. 
an update on the ongoing Gabby Petito case. FBI is currently searching Brian Laundrie's home. He is wanted for questioning in the disappearance of his fiance. Her body was, dis was believed to be found yesterday at a Wyoming National Park. The FBI is still examining the DNA to confirm. The police are still searching for Laundrie after he refused to comment on the case. Petito was reported missing on September 11th, 10 days after Laundrie had allegedly returned to Florida. The vehicle, a white 2012 Ford Transit van, was processed and is still being investigated by authorities. The case is still ongoing. We will keep you updated as the story develops. Today, the stock market had its biggest drop in almost a year as the Chinese real estate company debt crisis continues. Evergrande has over $300 billion in debt and has $100 million of interest payments due next week. The crisis caused the Dow's to drop more than 900 points this afternoon. We will keep you updated as this story develops. UCO is launching a new elementary education program called Pre-Education. The program aims to introduce age-appropriate materials relating to prejudice, race, culture, disabilities, and gender identity to young children. It was created to bring awareness and understanding before stereotypes are formed. The program is funded by the Department of Homeland Security as a part of their anti-terrorism efforts. UCO's academic calendar has welcomed a new class for the fall semester. The Bronco Blueprint class is designed for first-year students to learn what they can do with their UCO degree. Today, the Blueprint class toured U Central's very own newsroom. This course offers insights into UCO's departments, professional skills, and personal development as you find your UCO identity. Today, the White House announced plans to ease travel restrictions for people entering the United States. Day in, the, in early November, we'll be putting in place strict protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19 from passengers flying internationally into the United States by requiring that adult foreign nationals traveling to the United States be fully vaccinated. Uh, obviously, travelers thanks, Tyler also, and Lillian. That's right. It is. Travelers will also be required to have a COVID-19 test before their flight. Unvaccinated Americans entering the country will have to take a COVID test before and after their flight. Contract tracing will be conducted using passengers' emails and phone numbers. And are you looking for a way to volunteer? UCO Community Engagement is looking for volunteers to build water stops this Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The water stops are for the Oklahoma City National Memorial Marathon. Lunch and water will be provided. Registration ends Wednesday. Contact Ashley Clark if you have any questions. And if you are looking for a fun event tonight, the Oklahoma City Jazz Orchestra is performing at 7.30 in the Jazz Lab with special guest Oklahoma Christian Jazz Ensemble. Tickets are $20 and can be bought online or by calling the UCO box office. Stop by and enjoy some music tonight on Campus Corner. And Lily, earlier we talked about the big change in weather coming tonight. Yeah, we'll chat more with Patrick about the cold front after this.
Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Thanks, Patrick. Welcome, welcome back. And we're gonna actually toss over to Patrick with the weather. Patrick, what do you Thanks, have? Thanks, Tyler and Lillian. That's right, it is currently hot across the state. As you can see behind me, you got 80 degrees up here in the panhandle. You got triple digits down here in the southwest part of the state with it being 102 in Altus and 101 in Lawton. As I mentioned before, it is 99 degrees here in the metro area, 94 up in Tulsa, 91 down in McAllister, so it is still hot across the state right now. Tonight, however, for the Edmond area, you've got 64 degrees as your low with a chance of thunderstorms. That's going to be right around 40 percent. Uh, winds out of the north at about 16 miles per hour, and the humidity is going to be at about 54 percent. And as I mentioned just a minute ago, 40 percent chance of some overnight thunderstorms. Lows across the state tonight, you're going to see that cold front move in and bring all that rain in with it. 53 over here in the panhandle, 60 the 60s, excuse me, here in the southwest part of the state and in the metro, and then 59 up here in Miami, Oklahoma, 70 degrees down in Idabel and 64 in McAllister. So it's going to cool off dramatically tonight, and hopefully the state will see a lot of that rain. Tomorrow, you've got fall weather in the state. I know it's September and we've got some fall weather rolling in, so I'm happy for that. I hope you guys are as well. 70s pretty much across the board for the state of Oklahoma. You got 76 up here in the Panhandle, 77 down here in Clinton. The high for tomorrow in the Edmond and Oklahoma City area is 76 degrees. You got 76 up in Tulsa as well. I'm excited for that weather. I hope you guys are too. I've been dying for some fall weather. Tomorrow morning here in the Edmond area, you're going to see 65 degrees at 7 a.m. It's going to be cool. Uh, noon, you're going to see 70 degrees and it's going to be rough, a little windy, but it'll be 70 degrees at noon. I can't stress enough, this fall weather is going to be amazing. 7 p.m., 72 degrees and clear. For the seven day forecast, as I mentioned earlier, tonight headed into tomorrow, you got about a 40% chance of rain and thunderstorms. Low tonight is 64 degrees. The high tomorrow is 76 degrees. 54 degrees is your low. 79 on Wednesday and 53 is your low. So early fall weather moving in. And then Thursday, you got 84 degrees is your high. 60 is your low. You see the 90s on Friday, and then you got 59 degrees as your low, and then 87 degrees Saturday, 61 on the low, and then 91 on Sunday. Fall is here. I'm excited for it. This weather's going to be great. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Patrick. And Tyler, have you had a chance to update your iPhone yet? I have not, but I will be giving you a full rundown on Apple's new software update and social media after this.
the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Youth Central News. I'm Tyler Whitehead, and here is your social media update. Attention all iPhone users. Today marks the release of iOS 15, a new software update for most Apple products. The main new feature is SharePlay, which lets users share TV shows, movies, music, and more through FaceTime. Other features include a portrait mode for video recording, new microphone settings, detailed maps for cities, and more. For more information, you can visit Apple's website. Are you excited to use these new features? And moving from the world of technology to the world of music, BTS spoke and performed today at the United Nations General Assembly. The group was there to help promote the UN goals. The members talked about the effects of the pandemic and more issues throughout their speech. They revealed that all seven of them have been vaccinated. Many fans across Twitter have been sharing the hashtag BTS ARMY in support of the group. And moving into the world of video games, it looks like a Fortnite and Balenciaga crossover is happening. Prices range from just under $400 for a hat to over $1,000 for a crew neck. The collab will also feature in-game features including new clothes and weapons in the game. All clothes are available for purchase today. And in the world of TV, Last night was the 73rd annual Emmys, which had a lot of fans buzzing on Twitter. In particular, people were talking about nominee Elizabeth Olsen. Vogue sta stated Olsen was the evening's best moment when she came in a dress designed by her twin sisters, Mary Kay and Ashley. Olsen was the star of WandaVision and is set to reprise her role in the upcoming Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Well, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss out on anything you Central News. And make sure you keep an eye out this week for a special announcement. Give us a follow on Twitter at you Central Media and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Central. Lily, what do we have coming up? Thanks, Tyler. After this, we will have an update for you on Bronco Sports. Stick around. we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you 
say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to U Central News. I'm Brady Gray, and this is your sports update. The U Shield football team was looking to bounce back Saturday night against a winless Missouri Southern team, but even early on in this one, it became very clear that wouldn't be the case. Following a missed Mo Southern field goal, Central attempted to get the upper hand, but ended up throwing a pick six in the process. U Shield didn't score a single point in the first half until the, until late in the second quarter, when running back Tucker Pauley found the end zone for the first time of his U Shield career. After a Bronco field goal the, to end the second half, the score at the midway point was UCO 10-7. The third quarter was uneventful as both teams traded punts the whole quarter. UCO ended up setting their season high for rushing yards in this one with 194, led by Stephon Brown 70, but it was out of necessity due to Central missing two starting receivers and having no pass catcher finished with more than 30 yards. Central's defense did all they could in this one, not allowing a single offensive point for 59 straight minutes. However, the dam finally broke in the final minute of the game as the Broncos let up a last-minute touchdown pass, losing 14-10. UCO drops to 1-2 on the early season, but also have a tall order this week as they visit Northwest Missouri, the number three team in the nation. Out on the fairways, the UCO men's golf team headed to Muskogee this morning to compete in the NSU Classic. After finishing 10th overall in the tournament last week to start their season, the Young Broncos squad got into their second tournament with some experience under their belts. They started at 8.30 this morning, and we'll update you on scores and standings tomorrow in sports. Also this morning, the UCO women's golf team had a tournament as they headed to Dallas Baptist. The first tournament of the year for the Lady Broncos also teed off at 8.30 this morning, and we should have updates on their scores and standings tomorrow as well. Good luck to both teams as they compete this season. And lastly in sports today, the Lady Bronco volleyball team carried a five-game win streak into the weekend, and that momentum helped them play solid in their matches over the weekend. They opened up conference play Friday with a highly contested loss to Pittsburgh State, losing all three matches in extended play by a combined six points. However, they responded well to the loss with a strong Saturday win at Newman, winning 4-1. The weekend moves them to a solid 8-2 on the year and 1-1 in conference play. That's all I have for sports today. To get more scores, news, and updates on all sports here at UCO, be sure to visit our website at broncosports.com. Have a great day, Edmund. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brady. And after the break, find out how you can get a free tree. Stay tuned. say and make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm 
sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! In a week, Edmund Electric and Urban Forestry and the Arbor Day Foundation will allow you to reserve one of their 234 free trees. This is part of their energy saving tree program. Online maps will also be included. Trees will be available for pickup on September 30th and October 1st at Bickham Rudkin Park. And let's go over to weather with Patrick to give our last look at weather. Patrick, what do you have for us? Thanks again, guys. One last look at the seven day forecast. It's roughly about 99 degrees right now, but it's going to cool off and we'll reach a low of 64 degrees. Uh, we got a 40% chance of overnight storms into tomorrow, uh, but tomorrow that cool front that brings that potential for rain is going to cool it off dramatically here in the state of Oklahoma. 76 degrees is your high tomorrow, 54 your low, 79 on Wednesday with 53 being your low, and then you got 84 on Thursday as your high, 60 as your low. 90 on Friday, 59 as your low, and 87 and 91 are your highs for the weekend with 61 degrees on Saturday night. So fall is here. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Patrick. And Lily, I know we were talking in between breaks about how tonight the temperatures are low enough to where we're actually going to take a walk tonight <laughs> because I, I'm just so excited about this fall weather. Yeah, we are going to get our huge coats and act like it is 40 degrees outside. And I'm going to put on my dog's little tiny boots. We're going to go strutting down the street with oh, our little coffees. <laughs> I love that. I think I'm going to take a nice walk to 7-Eleven, listen to some music. But uh, that's all we have for today's edition of U Central News. Have a good night, Edmund.